Hi everyone, my name is Jared Beeman and I'm an application specialist on a concrete segment. This video is going to be about the categories in the organizer. What I'm doing right now is just taking it outside of my organizer. So if I just wanted to interact with my model just with categories, I wasn't interested in reports, I could pull that out from there and just see that by itself. If you want to pause your screen, you can take a look at what's inside of our category section. We'll have location categories that organize information based on physical location, property categories that can write EDA information to object groups or objects you select, or custom categories that automatically organize information based on object groups. On the top right, you can create new categories. You can select objects from your categories and you can import and export these categories. If I want to add in a custom category, first I'm going to pull up its properties and we're just going to go through the process of creating one for cast in place parts. First thing we'll do is assign it a unique name that gives a description of what type of objects are going to be in this category. We'll select information from our Tecla model and here's the filter we select that automatically brings in our objects. You can select a property template that contains information that we would like to see in a report that we can export to Excel. And here's where we'll select the automated list. So I'll have a running list underneath my category called name, which is the template attribute. So once I resynchronize my model, it's going to bring in those concrete all parts and break it down by the name. So we can select objects from your category. Now if I click on each of these individual subcategories, you can select those in the model to either make changes or develop a report from. You can create multiple subcategories beneath your categories. So let's make a subcategory that's going to check for pores that are over a daily maximum. So instead of bringing in all of our pore information, it's going to need to meet a requirement for the volume of that pore. So again, we'll select from our Tecla Structures model. And this time we're going to create a filter to recognize pore volumes over some daily maximum. In this example, I'm just going to set it equal to 60 cubic yards. And this is a filter setting. If you have a standard, if it's 150 or 200 cubic yards, a standard for a project, you can take this filter setting and save it away in your firm folder so you don't have to create this setting every time. So I'm going to check that the object is a poor object, and then the category is going to be a template, the property will be volume, and the condition will be greater than or equal to 60 cubic yards. And in this box, I'm going to be typing it in as cubic feet since that's what my unit settings are set to. So if it's a poor object and it's greater than 60 cubic yards in volume, it's going to bring it into my organizer. For that new filter to be available in the list, we'll have to exit out of that Categories Properties dialog and then open it back up, and now we should see it in our list. Pour over 60 cubic yards. And now we'll make subcategories. We could make it based on the volume. Select that. I'll hit Modify. OK. And now we can see the pores in our model that are greater than 60 yards. So this would allow me to select those pores and go out and add a pore break so it's below our daily maximum. Once I add in that pour break and resynchronize my organizer, it's going to update that information and that pour will no longer be in that pour over daily maximum category. Next, let's take a look at property categories which can write information to object group filters or objects that we select. 
So let's go over an example of creating a property category for rebar releases. So we're going to look to our Tecla Structures model. And within this property category, we're going to bring in all of our rebar. So you can find the rebar underscore all. And let's make a subcategories list based on the release name. Right now, all the rebar on the model does not have a release sign to it. So there should be no value for that just now. And in the bottom in the object property section, that's where we're going to select the UDA information that we're going to write to our model. So we select the property, what type of property it is, and the value you want to assign to it. Right now, I'm going to keep that value as blank. So it's brought all that information into my rebar releases property category, but no information has been written yet. So let's create a new subcategory, and this will be for my rebar release number one. We can give it a title. And instead of automatically bringing objects in, we're going to manually move rebar into this property category. And the value we're going to assign to the release is a value of 1. And I added in another release group there. So now we're going to manually select the rebar within cast units and then add them to the property category. So I'm selecting rebar that is within a strip footing cast unit and a pad footing cast unit. And now I can move those objects into my release number one. And so now once I synchronize my organizer, it's going to write that information. Using the organizer to write UDA information expedites this process significantly. If we quire in on a part, we can see where that information was written to the object. We can also pull up the UDA properties and go over to the release info tab and see where that information was written as well. That's all for this video. If you have any other questions about the organizer, especially categories, reach out to your Tecla services team or post a comment below.